It is 8.30 a.m. in Athens, also 8.30 a.m. in Looney, Virginia, 12.30 p.m. in Mahia, Ghana, and 1.30 p.m. in Mad Slovakia. Hi, I'm Callie. I'm Dylan. And you're listening to Studio 595. Um, welcome or welcome back to Studio 595. As always, we are so happy to have you here. Um, I would like to give a big shout out at the beginning of this episode to my math teacher, Miss Julie Fiamingo, who listened last episode and commented on it in class. Love you, Miss Fiamingo. You're the best. Um, other than that, last episode was my episode. Thank you guys for listening. It was actually our third episode that we've had to hit over 100 views. So we're very grateful for that. Um, it's a big accomplishment in our eyes. Um, this week's episode is Alex's, producer Alex's episode. Um, and we are very excited to hear what it's all about because it's kind of been kept hush-hush from us. We're not really sure what's going on. Tell us. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Yes, this is producer Alex. Uh, welcome to episode nine of Studio 595. Um, this is my episode, and naturally it will be uh, episode eight being Callie's episode, episode nine being my own, episode 10 not being Dylan's, and episode 11 being Dylan's. Because <laughs> um, we will have a special 10th episode uh, coming up, you know, at the turn of the month. So if that's not ominous, then... I don't know what it will be. Um, but yes, welcome to the episode that I have curated for this um, show. The hosts do know my idea for the last segment, but if they haven't remembered, then that will honestly even be more fun. So for this episode, I wanted to sort of center it around a particular event that for copyright reasons we cannot say is going on. Um, starting this week until the first week of April uh, involving college basketball and the subsequent national championship tournament of that sport. So I wanted to go along with the themes of madness and mania, as you see in the title of the episode today, with tips for people that are struggling with this time of school year when we are getting into the final stretch, especially with uh, second semester midterms and exams that you're preparing for and you know the big decision times in terms of colleges and all that stuff and so i wanted to first address obviously the biggest elephant in the room and that's stress um and just so you guys can back me up would you say that you guys are feeling a bit stressed given that it is march in your final semester yes oh god many times yes yeah, geez. It is um, too much. Actually, I think I'm just past the point of stress. I think being a... You've, you've reached the, the stress beyond. I think that being a second semester senior um, is just a, a constant like stress and anxiety. Luckily for me, I am only taking technically like two classes. Yeah. So I'm grateful for that. But um, it's it's still overwhelming somehow. Because you're not just doing classes, you're also thinking about where you're going to go to school and how you're going to pay for your school and who you're going to be when you go into that school and if you're going to pass all your classes. And it's just a lot, but it's yeah. okay. You it's see, okay. Like For me, I decided to only focus on one part and that's like actually graduating high school first. And like even then, because again, past the point of stress. Yeah. Right. And... I have to agree with Callie and Dylan here um, because although I'm no longer in school, uh, that sort of very stressful part of being in school, especially in my last year of high school and obviously the last year of um, university, uh, was extremely stressful, extremely long nights, extremely, you know, tired because of the lack of sleep. And so what I would give a suggestion towards is to chip away at things. Um, maybe you want to be really productive one day, but one, but another day you want to be a bit more relaxed and you just can't, you can't mentally put yourself in a position to be extremely productive that day. And I get it. And I think that everyone around you would get it. I think that your teachers would get it because 
it's extremely overwhelming and it is extremely just stressful to be always um you know using your brain to that capacity consistently and so what i would suggest is to chip away at things you know if you have a project do one or two things per day on it make sure that you know even if you aren't being the most productive that day to just do one or two things just to get it out of the way and that way you have less things to worry about if you reach the point that you do have to cram and i won't recommend cramming but there are certainly some times that i've chipped away at a couple things and it and it makes it easier for that last push to get everything done uh, this is the disclaimer i am not a professional uh, i am simply a former student and a product of the school district district and I want to simply help out everyone that is in a stressful situation um, but by all means um, ad address your school counselor and talk to them and have that discussion so that there are other people giving you advice and other people giving you information towards what can help out for sure um, and I think like Alex said Dylan and I are not professionals by any means. So if something that we say doesn't suit you and your personal journey, leave it behind. Feel free to skip out on it. You don't have to, you don't, there's no obligation to take what we're saying heavily, take it lightly. But I feel, I feel a similar way as you, Alex. I think that schools place a lot of stress on us, especially as seniors, um, but it's, it's good sometimes. It's teaching you balance, work-life balance. And some, it's something that I definitely had to learn coming into this year with like two internships and a bunch of classes and college decisions, college apps. Um, I really had to figure out like what I was doing and how I could balance it all and not lose my mind. And it was really implementing like simple stuff that helped out the most, like making sure I got out in nature like twice a week, like really got out in nature, like went for like a walk with my friends out and like a hike or something. Or like making sure that I did at least like an hour of homework when I got home from school while I was still dressed in my school clothes, while I was still, you know, sitting up and awake and alert. So that way I could relax for the rest of the night. It was stuff like that that really made the biggest difference, I'd say. Yeah. I, I agree with Callie because I feel like a lot of the time during my senior years of both university and high school, I was so closed in my own box. And this still happens to this day. And I have to and this is sort of a reminder for myself to do this. But when you're feeling really stressed and burnt out, just step back and to hang around with people that you care about or people that can sort of help you feel a bit more relaxed. And I think that's a really good example, Callie, that going out in nature and, and being with friends or doing something that kind of takes you out of that headspace of constantly trying to be productive and, and working and stuff and, you know, stressing about exams and everything. That can be a massive help. Another thing is to get sleep as much as you can. I know that that's often difficult. I know from my personal experience, I was sleeping from the age of about 17 to 21 when I graduated college. Um, I was sleeping about three to four hours a night consistently. And I mean, like me, <laughs> <laughs> um, there were years that I was sleeping at about 2 a.m. because I was just working on schoolwork and I would work until two or three or four in the morning and then go to sleep, get back up at about six or seven, then go to class and try to, you know, go through the day. And, and in that, in that moment, I felt like I was doing a great service to myself because I was being productive because I was being, you know, focused on my work. But obviously in, in hindsight, I, I was not doing myself any favors. I was, extremely stressed i was you know i tried to balance work and relaxation as much as i could but you know you fall into a situation where you feel like you're at a deficit in terms of what you have to get done for the day and i think that your mental health and your physical health has to take priority and so have that conversation with your, with your professors or with your teachers and let them know and if that's not gonna work out then just do what you can to be productive 
but as as often as you can go to sleep at your regular time don't go to sleep you know entering midnight and beyond because you just that ultimately just is not sustainable and you will find yourself having greater issues if you continue to do that for a long period of time because i i sure did yeah and i also think something i had to pick up along the way that really helped is um the like it's not that big of a deal mentality and not for everything some things are that big of a deal some things are don't misquote me on that but some things aren't taking a mental health day for school it's not that big of a deal it's gonna be okay the other day i said i'm not coming in because i don't need the extra hours of work but i do need the extra hours of sleep that's totally valid get your sleep on go to bed wake up you're gonna be tired but you're gonna be okay just if you don't want to talk to people for a day don't do it it's not that big of a deal like just go with the the flow of what you're feeling and things align more you're in a better mood when you're doing that and that's a good point because i i can't tell you one assignment that i did that in like in those long nights except for a project that i did in university that haunts my mind to this day that, that brings up a good point that you know naturally your body will tell you it's time to sleep because your body is tired and when your body is tired your brain isn't functioning at its peak and if your brain isn't functioning at its peak it's not going to be as productive so no matter how you may be feeling at night no matter how awake you may be because of coffee or because of whatever um your brain isn't going to operate the same it's not going to be as productive it's not going to be as you know zoned into your assignment or towards studying as possible so just take the rest by all means just take For the rest sure. and please drop the class or the club that is stressing you out especially for my seniors especially if it's not but if it's a required Necessary. class, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I was, okay, was going to say, if, if, if it's, it's a required class, then obviously you can't drop it because you needed to graduate. Yeah. But for example, I just had a sociology class that would start at 8.30 in the morning, <clears throat> and the teacher was very um, good teacher, but just didn't, we didn't align in terms of um, teaching method and learning method. And so I, I was very stressed out. She had assigned like a 16 page paper in the first two weeks of class. And I said, respectfully, I'm dropping your class. Like it's nothing wrong with the teacher. Emotionally, mentally, I knew I could not handle that this this year, this last semester of school that I'm ever gonna do. Um, or I'm ever gonna do in high school. I'm going to college. Um, and then like a club. If there's a club that like you're way too stressed out in, there's way too much work, you really can't do it, don't do it. You're not gonna miss it that much. I like promise you that. I can 100% assure you, you're not gonna miss it that much. Go to bed and if you have extra time, you can pick it back up later in the year. Yeah. And I would say for specifically our high schoolers out there, when you're registering for classes in the spring, keep that in mind. Like, <laughs> I know that this is after the fact because conferences have already happened and all that is going on. And, you know, as someone that was present for those conferences because I was helping with interpreting them, um, there were some instances where, you know, students ultimately just didn't care the class that they were in as an alternate the, the caveat to that is that if you if you don't care about that class and if you're put in that class you kind of have to deal with it so pick classes that you know you may not take just because scheduling didn't work out that well but if you are able to take it pick classes that you feel wouldn't be as stressful would be an opportunity for you to think in a different way in, in a creative way especially with um arts classes or anything that kind of distracts your mind from your core classes um so that you're not permanently in that mindset that you know you have to be you know studying doing an assignment studying for an exam doing an assignment studying for another exam doing an assignment and this is i am definitely giving a shout out to my uh fellow ap students because i know from experience i took many ap classes when i was in high school and i was mentally drained by the end of the semester and so you know i i had to in my last year kind of focus on what i needed to get done a hundred percent and and that was um if i remember right ap stat um ap econ and i think i took another ap class i took three three ap classes in my final year and while i don't regret it because it did help me out in the end um it was mentally taxing 
uh, to say the least. But I would say look for ways to distract yourself, look for ways to, like Callie said earlier, um, be surrounded by people that you can trust, that, you know, you have that similar struggle in and you're all trying to decompress, you're all trying to, you know, let loose a little bit and do that in ways that are conducive to your brain taking a rest, your brain sort of processing different things other than assignments. And by all means for the next two months or so, um, get as much rest as possible, prepare yourself for the next day, prepare yourself for a week of work, prepare yourself to tackle the day, prepare yourself to sort of stop and 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 get to a stopping point because that is often difficult to do if you feel like um you're about to finish there's there's a term um that climbers use when they're climbing everest and it's summit fever and that is you are sort of you have tunnel vision that all you see is the the peak all you see is the highway hypnosis if you will i guess <laughs> when you're driving and like you get too focused on the highway and you get like hypnotized of where you're like just going straight yeah and and all you're thinking about is your destination and you're not thinking about how you get there you're not you're not thinking about the repercussions of the amount of energy that you're exerting to just to reach that point and i think that it's a good way to sort of um to callie's analogy to get on the exit ramp or to move over a lane or two to the right and you know slow down a little bit get yourself to a stopping point visit the rest area i heard it's lovely <laughs> um and just you know take a break take a moment to collect your thoughts to relax to decompress and you should be fine and all and ultimately with the final months of the year upcoming everyone is going to do fine you guys are going to do uh as good as you possibly can but by all means try to make that as best as possible by doing a bit less you know reeling in that effort and finding a, a place to stop because you know they say work smarter don't work harder and when all else fails um follow the advice of donley from last episode slay slay, slay, slay the, day the day away incredible and now we will go to district updates as part of our can't miss minutes congratulations to miss bethany forrester k5 gifted program teacher at alps road elementary for being named ccsc's employee of the month for march as a reminder any member of the ccsc community staff students families or community members can nominate a ccsc employee for employee of the month in case you missed it, CCSE has announced updated graduation plans for Cedar Shoals and Clark Central following the closure of Segment Coliseum due to needed structural repairs. The Cedar Shoals ceremony is now scheduled for 8.30 a.m. Thursday, May 25th at Waters Wilkins Stadium, and the Clark Central ceremony is now scheduled for 8.30 Friday, May 26th at Billy Henderson Stadium. You can find more information about contingency plans in the event of inclement weather on our website at clark.k12.ga.us. Schools will be providing graduating seniors with additional details about their ceremonies. Speaking of, seniors, have you been procrastinating on those college applications? Well, this month is the time to do it in Georgia because the Georgia Student Finance Commission has teamed up with over 40 public and private colleges, universities, and technical colleges across the state to waive their application fees for the entire month of March. So if you want to put in some applications free of charge, head over to gafutures.org for more details. And for any parents and teachers out there listening who want to serve on their school's local school governance team or LSGT, the window to declare your candidacy for your school's LSGT is now open and runs through April 12th with voting set for April 19th through the 26th. Head to the district website, navigate to the four families tab and click on charter system to find your way to the elections page where you can access the candidate declaration form. And finally, be sure to bookmark our website, follow us on social media at Clarko Schools, and make sure you're subscribed to the weekly Better Together newsletter curated by our colleague and friend of the podcast, Scott Thompson, to stay up to date with the latest news and information from Clark County School District. Now we turn it over to Callie and Dylan for some pop culture updates and more Studio 595.
Now for something actually important, the live action Little Mermaid trailer dropped at the Oscars. So excited to see Halle Bailey, not Halle Berry, play the Little Mermaid um, when it releases. Um, Princess Diana's dress sold for $600,000. I can buy so much dinner with that amount of money, but somebody decided to buy a dress, so that's cool. So social media monopoly Meta is uh, making a competitor to Twitter. I don't know why. They already have Facebook and Instagram, but I guess this one's text-based, so it's more like Twitter. Also, Ghost Trick is getting a remake. <laughs> Dylan's MO is just being really bland about one thing and then getting really excited about the next thing. And it's honestly extremely fun to listen. Ghost Trick Phantom Detective is a game about a dead man trying to find out why he's dead and also saving a bunch of other people from being dead. I have not played through the whole game yet on the DS, but it is amazing from what I have played. So Get hyped, it's Alex's turn. Wiki, that, wiki, that's coming out on June 30th. <laughs> oh no! I wouldn't have said that if I, I knew. I, I, I can cut you okay. off. That's fine. <laughs> I would have known. If you had more to say. I wouldn't have wiki wiki fresh. And I know that normally I give some local news when giving my uh, pop culture updates, but I decided to go international this week. And a Japanese member of parliament has become the first member to be expelled without ever stepping foot inside the legislative chamber. Yoshikatsu Higashitani has been stripped of his position after winning his election in July after he never showed up to work as he is a YouTuber that does celebrity gossip videos and currently lives in the United Arab Emirates. Parliament had given an ultimatum to the YouTuber turned legislator to fly to Tokyo to apologize for his absence, to which of course he did not attend and was subsequently stripped of his position. And finally, a high story to end pop culture updates. A man in England was arrested after allegedly sealing a semi-truck that contained 200,000 Cadbury cream eggs. 32-year-old Joby Poole was stomped on a highway in Telford and central England shortly after the heist. He said he used a metal grinder to break into a gate and seal the truck, which had the Easter treat inside of it, to a value of 40,000 Great British Pounds or $48,000. I know what that man would spend his $600,000 on. About... 12 or 13 different trucks of Cadbury cream eggs. <laughs> I am that man. They're just chocolate eggs. If, if you haven't had Cadbury cream eggs before, they are chocolate eggs with just a sickingly sweet sugar. Deliciousness. Uh, no. what, what, what I can just call sugar paste inside of it. So yeah, good. caramel is deliciousness. Whatever is in Cadbury eggs is... Not that. <laughs> um, likely in the video, I am showing a image of a Cadbury cream egg. You see it, it looks nice, and now you look on the inside of it. And I can tell you right now, the consistency is indeed sugar. And so to wrap up a very fun episode, you know, we, we talked about something serious. Let's talk about something a bit more fun now. Um, and that is, you know, when you think of March, you think of the aforementioned um, college basketball tournament that I mentioned at the, at the start of the show. Which name is trademarked. Trademarked, and therefore we can't use it. And therefore that is why this episode is called March Mania. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what is March Mania, you may ask, producer Alex, with your ultimate wisdom. Um, and I give to you, my young or older uh, audience member, as well as my high school senior uh, hosts, Studio 595 School Supplies March Media 2023. That, that is what we are doing to end the show. We are we are deciding the ultimate school supply, and I have limited it to not include a lunch box or a backpack because I think that those Be so those things would definitely th those would definitely win. Like oh my a gosh, backpack, the winner wait, is wait. called Line Leader. Isn't yes? Isn't lunch box? Huh? It's, it's on, on there. Is it? Yeah. Did I put it? Yes. Uh -huh. Never it's mind. It's in the yellow. Never mind. Lunchbox is in there. Uh, I'll think... make sure it doesn't win so we yes. can have something else. <laughs> Backpack I left out because I feel like that literally encapsulates most of the things on this list. So that is what we're going to do. And so we see, as Callie pointed out, the winner will be named Line Leader, um, which Callie is doing a face that shows that this is an adorable tournament. So cute. Um, 
and just like what you would see probably in some sort of elementary school class probably maybe um we have a red corner we have a blue corner we have a yellow corner and we have a green corner because it's fun we don't want regions we don't want you know the national collegiate athletic association can keep their regions and their you know so-called fantastical names that they give each round um and we will have 32 different school supplies um it's gonna take so long i do have it seated to the point that like you know the, the top of the bracket is you know the ideal kind of school supplies and it's formatted so that you know number two and number one would face each other and whatnot um ideally and so as with the uh previous stuff that we've done before each of our hosts will have one vote and i will serve as a tiebreaker and so we go to the red corner with laptop versus usb drive i know that that's kind of unfair yeah but that, that's how the seeds why you gotta do out. usb drive like that I mean, you kind of need a laptop to use the yeah. drive. Yeah. So. I'll be laptop. Yeah. Okay. I, that is as simple as I thought it would be. And so we move laptop to the next round. Sticky notes and bookmarks. Sticky notes. Sticky notes. Sticky notes. I, I think that's just more convenient. You can and use a sticky note as a bookmark. Facts. That's I do true. that all the time. Yeah. Dylan, you're so smart. The uh, diversity and um, the usefulness of the sticky note. Uh, calculator and scissors. Calculator. Mm. I play Tetris on mine all the time. I mean, what? <laughs> this is hard for me because you know I love a good art and craft moment. Oh, that is true. However, I can't do math. So <laughs> I desperately need a calculator. By the way, shout out to my math teacher again for always letting me use a calculator in math class. We love math teachers that love calculators. Pen and ruler. Pen. Ooh, pen. That is fair. Uh, now we go to the blue corner, and this is and this is a wild one a bit. Loose leaf paper and a protractor. Okay, you see, I absolutely despise loose leaf paper, but it's still paper. Who uses a protractor? <laughs> I've never used a protractor. If my math old math teachers are listening and I have used a protractor, <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, I guess loose leaf paper, yeah. Yeah, loose leaf paper because really she has to win this. Well, let, let, let's be a hundred percent honest. Has anyone used a protractor in you know? I couldn't even tell you what a protractor. For, is for every like. time that you accurately use a protractor, <laughs> accurately. or or you know, in the correct manner. You do just put it around your wrist and act like you're Wolverine, right? Am, am I? Oh no. Okay. Uh, Kelly's giving me the. <laughs> Kelly's, Kelly's giving me the. Uh, you're on your own kind of thing. No, this well, is. This is just a universal experience among men. I thought the protractor <laughs> was the semicircle. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. And you just hold it like this, I don't and you're think just my like. Wrist, oh, like Wonder Woman. I guess. That's what I always like, Wonder Woman. Well, there you go. It's, I it, think we all have our own version of this. Okay. I, I guess. I, I guess in forward. reality, it's around like it's around your knuckles and not your wrist. Anyways, um, binders and index cards. Ooh, binders, index cards. Huh? I this, take, this is our I first have not use it. I use them all the time. No, I have not used an index card since like fourth grade. Well, okay? that's because you're not an avid note taker. I'm an avid note taker. All of my notes are digital. Okay. <laughs> that is the problem. This new generation. <laughs> you little Gen Zers and your little digital notes and your phones. No, I'm joking. Um, I am in Gen Z. I love index cards. I will vouch for them every day of the week. First of all, you can make flashcards. Second of all, they're like elevated post-it notes. Like the only thing that would- Because they're, they're not big. sticky. No, but they're bigger. Like they have more space to write on. You can get you them You can get big post-it no, notes. You can get them lined. You can get them unlined. You can get them colorful, not colorful, sparkly. You can get whatever you want on that index card. Post-its only come in like three colors. Yeah, but what about binders? Tell me you have a binder in your bag right now. I used to until I went laptop <laughs> only. I used to. I have a binder in my bag until I get to high school. No high schoolers use binders. Imagine being in class. I, I whoa, whoa. Imagine being in okay, class and I you feel offended. I used a binder. Imagine yeah, you're I in use, class and I you whip out a freshman. binder to get your papers out. A folder? That's a different. I, I think this might be our poll for the episode. Like, which is which is more useful, a binder or an index card? 
Because okay, okay. where are you hard. putting your hands? Hey, that's hard. Once you get out of public, once you get out of public school, you, you, what do you have to use a binder for? But once you get out of public school, you can paper. still use an index card to this day. Yeah, this day. I use. Uh, yeah, I, I, wrote the paper. My, I wrote my notes on the paper that I would we, put in a put binder. Loose leaf paper as the winner for the last folder. round. Where, where are you gonna folder? put that paper? As, as tiebreaker, I have to choose binders. I think that you're very <laughs> wrong. <laughs> I didn't think that this would be the hill that we have our fight in. Um folders and whiteout whiteout i make too folders. many uh, freaking writing mistakes do you own a whiteout i had whiteout <laughs> and then i lost it and then i instantly regretted if losing you it had whiteout i feel like you don't use it that as often as you wish that you would if that makes sense like you buy it you think you're going to use it more than you do and then you when you actually make a mistake you forget that you have it so i'm going to go folder because i haven't actually no every I time a I white out but i haven't used no, a white every out. time i made a writing mistake i i always broke out the white out until i lost it i i will say um for one i am going to agree with cali uh, as a tiebreaker here that folders are superior because. uh and this may be from a traumatic experience in which i had white out uh, I put it in my backpack and then it burst. Oh um, yeah, I love so that. So that's happens. that's that's not fun. Oh, you you were using the liquid, yes, uh, not not yes, the strips. Yes, and and I think as an alternative, um, if you're especially using pen, the known technique for it is not to scribble per se because that still leaves you know the mistake. Most times people can read it, but to draw like little loops through the word that you're trying to cross out because that makes it indistinguishable. Um, Callie, you laugh. I'm gonna bring an example in the video i will bring my sources with us um uh highlighter and construction paper oh highlighter every yeah, day of the I'm week highlighter i love construction paper but i can make a beautiful piece of paper with just loose leaf if i have highlighters i am i am in pain because i i really wanted construction paper to go really far in this but i do understand that it is an uphill battle for it um okay yellow corner a notebook and hand sanitizer notebook but is it a spiral notebook or is it a composition notebook um I, I can't I, stand i i think i think um for the purpose of what i was typing up when i thought about this it, it encapsulates all notebooks but when i typed out notebook i thought spiral notebook okay then i will go notebook but if i just can't stand composition notebooks because why are they like that the notebook moves on I love The Notebook, it's my favorite movie. Now, th this may be another laptop versus USB drive battle. Uh, crayons or a pencil pouch? Crayon. Dylan? I I'm just like confused on why these two are paired and not like crayons versus colored pencils, but okay. Uh, uh, I, I will say, I will say I did have a methodology to this and I there were some matchups that I thought were unfortunate. And so I, I typed out all the seeds that I thought, you know, one to eight seeds. Um, as you, you see on, on the, on each section there are eight. And so I put ones that I thought would be, num you know, number one seeds, number two seeds and so on. And then I randomly generated uh, the matchups. And unfortunately, laptop ended up being against USB drive and crayons ended up being against pen pencil pouch. So that's my methodology for this. Okay, and I'm it's just an unfortunate probably matchup. Probably going to go with pencil pouch. Oh, what is wrong with you? Crayons rock. They rule. I will say Tell me it's, you don't like it's breaking out a cold thing of crayons. Brand new, the 64 pack with the pencil sharpener on the back. It's a crayon sharpener. Get it right. <laughs> crayon sharpener on the back. You open up some paper. You're like, I'm going to doodle. And then you do in whatever color you want. Okay, but it's really hard to get like a solid thing of color with pencil crayons. Pencil pouches mm -hmm. would be nowhere without crayons. What would you put in the pencil pouch? Pencils. Color pencils. Boo. And pens. Who likes color and pencils markers more than and highlighters. <laughs> Alex, and be for snack. real when you break this tie. Be so for real. Which one you enjoy more? It is a close one, but I will choose crowns. Thank you. It, it, it's, it is actually pretty close because the pencil, pou pencil pouch is very useful. I, I think this is an easy one. Lunchbox, glue stick, one, two, three, lunchbox. lunchbox. Well, the, the glue stick is my lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that is a hundred percent saying in the episode. Um, <laughs> lunchbox, for lunch. lunchbox. Even if Dylan really enjoys the glue stick, I would break the tie towards Kids lunchbox. Don't eat glue. It's a joke. Eraser and tape. Uh, two tape. things that help put things oh, together or fix oh, things. Oh dang! I don't know. Mm, uh, yeah, tape. Uh, I don't know. Um, I really like erasers because I'm like 
make a lot of mistakes when I write with pencil. But okay, so you choose eraser, but not whiteout. No, because who uses whiteout, bro? You <laughs> write with pencil and use an eraser. Um, why am I gonna break out a paintbrush to like fix my mistakes? Just use the strips. Oh. They come in like, like I get like a, a, a quill and just, ink. I'm gonna. It go. does this now. It doesn't. You don't need to brush it on. I'm gonna go eraser. And Dylan, you went with tape. Yeah. I, I will have to say the eraser is one of the greatest inventions in, in, in human history. Like actually, like not even joking. Uh, this one, this one should be easy to start off the green corner. The number two pencil versus the hole punch. The, the number pencil. two pencil. Number two pencil. That is fair. Who would be nowhere without the number two pencil? I actually gonna... use a point seven pencil. Yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> also, hole punches are fun to make holes in, but they're not. Entirely useful. They just remind me of um, the Polar Express. Why? <laughs> you, you don't, huh? Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. See, I'm thinking of like the industrial okay, like three hole punch. I'm hoping oh. that Alex puts a video of the conductor <laughs> yeah. of Tom Hanks' character so from... that you can. See. No, it's literally just Tom. I Hanks. love Tom Hanks. <laughs> 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 you can see what I'm talking about. I just put, uh, you know, the the, the cutaway of. Um, the hand like making the holes in a picture of Tom Hanks right next to it yeah. and now narrating myself putting that in the episode <laughs> that's fun uh, pencil sharpener or permanent markers permanent marker yeah. I love a good sharpie and I love writing with love sharpies. the smell of sharpies yeah sharpies were my lunch actually so Dylan I think you're making the correct decision with the incorrect justification for it <laughs> um, Lou is my lunch <laughs> Markers or a planner? Dylan, I know your answer for this. Markers. Planners have always been an issue for me. I have a planner. Markers. I love markers more though. <laughs> like, I, my planner wouldn't be what it is without the help of my markers. A mechanical pencil or a stapler? Mechanical pencil. Mechanical pencil. I think that's fair. But I actually don't, rare, rare occasion, <laughs> don't prefer um, mechanical pencils to, to normal pencils like a lot of people do. Oh, well, watch out. That could be a matchup later on. Um, and so we are down to our final 16 as we go to laptop and sticky notes. Um, laptop? Sticky notes. How? Wow. How? Because, wow. Okay, here's my thing. Your laptop can do literally anything because you need it to do. What's a sticky note going to do? You just write on it. It has words on it. Okay. Like, have you ever performed an internet search on a sticky note? Can I say though? <laughs> I'm kind of one of those people who doesn't use their electronics a lot for schooling. Like okay. all my notes are on paper. I have a paper. So, you, so you literally just use your electronics for social media. That's uh, like no. I also use them for like video editing, like homework when it's on the computer, like when I have to okay. upload photography, managing like my portfolio. Like I use my laptop okay, for a ton of but stuff. Like computers are the tool. Yes, like, but I'm saying, for, in my personal opinion, I don't learn when I'm just taking notes on a computer or, or you, something Even like, when you're manually typing it out, not- I'm saying I don't learn when I'm taking notes on a computer or doing my schoolwork on a computer. So I rely heavily on um, paper notes and paper sticky notes. So I choose sticky notes. I don't need no shame about it. <laughs> I love my sticky notes. Mom didn't raise no fool. Um, Unfortunately, I will have to go with laptop to That's for a fine. Um, It's their own. Yeah. But my own is sticky notes. <laughs> Calculator versus pen. Again. Kelly's eyes just lit my, up. My TI-84 <laughs> Plus plays Tetris. <laughs> Allie? Do math Th this without is, a calculator. This is, this is a tough one. The issue is I can't do math without a calculator. Like, actually... <laughs> There's like a mathematician listening to this somewhere, just like sobbing into himself. <laughs> um, I can play Doom on I'm gonna a calculator. Go, <laughs> I love pens. I use them all the time. But, but I'm going to do calculator because I think I, I need it a lot. For a me. calculator? Yeah. All right. And so a calculator goes on to and the final And I already know what's winning the next eight. round. Uh, loose leaf paper and binders. This is another laptop USB drive kind of scenario. Yeah. Paper. Huh? Loose leaf paper over binders. Y'all know my feelings gonna, on uh, binders. I, I am just Stop asking. that in your bag? <laughs> no, I'll put it in a folder. Oh, oh good God. <laughs> oh, good God. Oh, no. Dylan. Binders take up too much space for doing the same exact thing that a folder does. That's what I don't understand. It's doing the same thing. And why do I have like six times the amount of plastic and nonsense? Because you have the ring. Paper? You have the rings. You don't need the ring. Just put I like folder. the rings. <laughs> Dylan. Loose leaf paper or binders? 
Uh, binder. Binder. Okay. I still think Lucy Paper is is, is uh, gonna win this, <laughs> just for the usefulness of it. You know, paper, um, folders, something that Callie loves so much, and highlighters, something that Callie also loves so much. Highlighters. Dylan. I'm going with folders just to spite you. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Now I have to be a tiebreaker, and I don't know where this is gonna go. I love a highlighter. I love, especially, I have really fancy ones, Japanese ones. Both of you, convince me in one sentence. Give me a second. Spite. <laughs> My argument is powered with spite. Highlighters make things pretty on anything you do. Will it make Help me remember pretty? Things. It, helps, it helps you remember things because it's beauty. Um, that is scientifically proven, actually. I will say in my later years in university at UGA, it did help out a lot. I will use a highlighter. Oh, it, it is. It is close, though. It's one of those like I kind of need both logistically no, uh, a notebook versus crayons. Notebook. I love the notebook. I'm kidding. I'm sorry. I have to make that show every time you say it. Um, <laughs> oh, well, the like hard scenario is like, well, do I have markers when I get rid of crayons? Because if I do, then I'm fine choosing notebook. But with that, but crayons for the inner for the inner first grader in me. Uh, I will unfortunately have to use a notebook. That's fine. But I, I do appreciate the 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 child whimsy of crayons. Um, lunchbox versus an eraser. Lunchbox. Lunchbox. That is fair. I like lunchboxes. I don't like the weird lunchbox smell that they get there. Not that. Yeah. It's, it's not gross. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's that just, may be the downfall of the lunchbox in the later rounds. It doesn't smell gross. It just smells like lunchbox. lunchbox. Like, like you just. I don't know. And then all your food <laughs> tastes like lunchbox. <laughs> um. And then you can't. You can you machine wash a lunchbox? Yeah. Oh my god. I need. I, oh, I, I think need, it depends on. I need on a form. metal lunchbox. I feel like that would solve my problem. The number two pencil versus permanent markers. Pencil. Ooh, per oh, mm, I really enjoy writing with a permanent marker. Oh, I'm gonna say pencil. Look at you, writing perfect with a handwriting. Writing with a permanent marker? Yeah, I'm gonna that's go pencil. Kinda, that's kind of bold, but okay. Number two, pencil. Markers, markers. versus a mechanical pencil. Mechanical markers. pencil. Markers. I need to. Okay, we have to have one thing that colors on this thing. <laughs> okay, true. Why are y'all anti-coloring? We, we have a highlighter. And you can't color with a highlighter. You ever try to color with a highlighter? <laughs> you just have the most serious look on your face right now. Um, okay, convince me in 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 one sentence. Draw I mean, pretty I, pictures make your brain happy. Like what? <laughs> yeah, she kind of convinced me when she said we don't have any color. So like, that's fair. Endorphins. Okay. Endorphins moves on to the last date. <laughs> laptop versus calculator to start the quarterfinals. Laptop? I can calculate on my laptop, so laptop. Yeah. I feel like the new age laptop is going to pull out strong here. Uh, loose leaf paper and a highlighter. Um, highlighter, because I'm going to pick notebook later. All right. No, so I don't need loose leaf paper and yeah, notebook. Yeah, because I, I don't like loose leaf paper. because It gets everywhere. It crumbles yeah. up. Yeah. I have to attach it to a ring. Like, dude, ring yourself. Why do, why do I have, <laughs> we have We have the first number one seed fall to the number two seed highlighter. Um, the notebook and the lunchbox. I love the notebook. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> notebook, sorry. Notebook. I just can't stop thinking about lunchbox to smell. Yeah, lunchbox smells awful. It just smells notebook. like lunchbox. I don't know how to explain it. The notebook advances into the semifinals. Marker. Markers <laughs> and the number two pencil. Markers. Th this is a titan falling really right now. I think I'm markers. seeing the end of the Roman Empire as, as, as we speak Lovely about this. Markers. I have like 20 markers in my bag and I write with them arguably more than I write with my pencils. That's why I have to go markers. And Dylan, you agree that markers, yes. the number three seed markers takes out the, what, what I thought would genuinely be like one of the top two, the number two pencil. And so we go on to the semifinals, laptop, highlighter laptop 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 fair i think laptop Ooh. has just such an unfair advantage when it comes to this you shouldn't have put it in here yeah but i mean you you guys do use laptops now yeah, so that like is a difference really all the time you should have replaced it with glue it's there <laughs> yeah glue no, like stick is there glue. 
Well, or stickers. Well, then it would be un- no incomplete. Because I feel like someone would bring up, oh, but the laptop. Yeah. Notebook. The notebook. Markers. Try again. The notebook and markers. I love the notebook. Hmm. Um, I feel like I'm just going to have a, a, an image of the notebook, like low ring and opacity every time <laughs> they mention it. Okay, Aww. here's my thing. I'm about to start arguing about the final one, so just let's, let's focus I on the notebook. semifinal. I love markers. But I'm glad they got this far, but notebook is like the ultimate school supply. I'm going to tell you why in a second. And Dylan, do you agree? Yeah. And so before we start arguments, this is like old versus new. Yeah. The battle between old versus new, the number one seed laptop versus the number one seed, the notebook. Callie, opening statement, go ahead. Let's talk about classic for a second, okay? You can't beat going school supply shopping with your mom or your dad, granny or grandpa, right? And picking up a beautiful notebook, like a pretty cool look. Maybe it's got a dinosaur on the front. Maybe it's got a unicorn on the front. Whatever it is, you're like, wow, this is, I can't wait to take this to school and show everybody, right? Like you're so excited. You break it open on the first day of school. You take notes in it. You draw pictures in it, especially in like elementary school. Man, it was awesome. I love taking notes in it. I still have multiple notebooks in my bag. It's classic. It, 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 it's just peak school supply, man. And I, you could pick laptop, but the thing about picking laptop is like, it's not as satisfying to get, to open, to write in, all of it. I'm voting notebook. Dylan, opening statement. Now, same I way. don't know if you've ever bought a new laptop before. <laughs> yeah, but that's a totally different thing. You're not going school supply shopping and buying a brand new laptop. Okay, that is true. I got mine used. But the point is that I was going to make is like outside of school work, like you can just be sneaking your passion. Like I've been doing 3D modeling for the past few months on my laptop. I, I will ask, is the laptop that you use for 3D modeling, modeling the same one that you use for school? Absolutely not. <laughs> And I think that gives credence to Callie's argument because I feel like- However, however remote desktop exists. Okay, but I can my, remote into my computer my from home. Like, that, then at that point, we're not talking about doing school work with your laptop. You're just talking about doing All outside right, work inside, inside of a school building. Then school building. work on a laptop. Let's talk about that. Typing, so much easier, so much neater than writing out. For, For some okay? people. Not like for me it's a lot more consistent <laughs> and like okay so let's say like you're trying to do research like you got your laptop open already like you, you don't have to uh you know write on a paper and then like you know go back to the laptop just to google you just switch to the tab right so but that takes all of away your, an element all of your work is in the same place but you know it takes away from from part of the experience of like doing what work experience you know the experience <laughs> the experience it's of doing the, the work that's for some people but i love school so i i'm big on this is really tough this, this you know is it's not tough alex well i i because i have to Live do your the tiebreaker. truth alex uh see th- th- this is this is the disadvantage of not Consistently having an assigned laptop when I was in school. Um, no, it's still the same way. You know how many people I know who take notes on their laptop? Approximately like two, and Dylan is one of them. Uh, I will say, Kelly made it. Kelly made a good point in terms of customizing a laptop because, let's be fair, you can't really customize a school issued laptop, and that's not you know to take a dig at the laptops that you guys have or you know laptops in general uh i have to i have to make a decision here and it's it's a bold one either way i have to go with drum roll please hey, wow you're still thinking yeah i actually Alex, am i have to go to class it's a close second i'll give it to the laptop what the line leader Let's go the line leader. I think just the, the 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 usefulness of a laptop. Laptops are not school supplies. Laptops are tools. Uh, real quick, third place highlighters or markers. Uh, markers. Marker. Markers. And so we have our top three amongst. Let the, please let the record show that I strongly disagree with this choice. And and that's fair because it, it, for a second you almost you almost had me yeah and so th- thank you everyone for participating please let us know your most contentious battles because this this is this is the one that I think that could start many an argument 
As always, guys, thank you so much for listening, coming back. We always appreciate you. Um, we're so happy that we get to do these episodes. Um, next episode is going to be really fun. So stay tuned and turn our notifications on so you can get that. Because um, I think you guys are really going to like the next episode that we make. Um, please follow us on our social medias um, at Clark CO Schools to keep up with all things Studio 595 and Clark County School District. Um, we appreciate you. As of right now, I'm Notebook Callie. I'm Laptop Dylan. And this has been Studio 595. Peace out. Ah. I love the notebook. <laughs> <laughs>